Good afternoon. Welcome. Today is the 23rd of December. Believe it or not, tomorrow is Christmas Eve. I'm sure you know by now that the cathedral will not be holding in-person services. Like so many others, we have chosen to be cautious and safe out of concern for everyone. We continue to stay remarkably safe here in Nova Scotia, and that is due to the conscious effort and the real sacrifices of everyone to follow the guidelines set out by Dr. Strang and the province, limiting travel, limiting gathering sizes, maintaining social distancing, wearing a mask, washing hands, and sanitizing. We've come too far to let our guard down now, especially as we await the slow and systematic rollout of vaccines. So in this Christmas tide, like none we have ever experienced, in a year that has been like none other, please join us online. Tomorrow, Christmas Eve, we will offer two services, one at 5 p.m., a BAS with music provided by Russ Hall on piano, accompanied by flute, violin, and trumpet, and at 10 p.m., a service that will feature a half hour of carols, special Christmas music leading into a choral BCP Eucharist with choir and brass ensemble. At both of our Christmas Eve services, we are pleased to welcome our bishop, Sandra Fife. Christmas Day, join us again for a service at 11 a.m. In the new year, providing all goes well through this Christmas holiday season, we look forward to once again offering in-person worship within the gathering limits allowable. I want to say a big thank you to all those that created snowflakes and stars of every size, shape, design, and color possible. This week we've been hanging them throughout the cathedral. You can probably see a large stepladder behind me, and you might even see a snowflake dancing over my head. They, uh, they kind of animate themselves based on the air currents in the building. So, Along with all of those that you have created, we have over 1,700 Christmas lights, and this place is looking pretty magical. Unfortunately, they don't show up that well on camera here, so we're extending an invitation for you to come and have a walkthrough to experience the peace and beauty of this space, to see the traditional creche, and if you could, bring along a donation for the food bank. We'll open our doors on Sunday the 27th, from 4 to 7 p.m. It will be darkish by then, so lights will be lovely, and by then you may be looking for a break from whatever you're doing at home. This will be a walkthrough only, maintaining proper distancing and all the other protocols, but I think you'll be amazed. Come and see if you can spot your special snowflake or star hanging here in our firmament. Now today, a bit of a change in place of the poem that we typically have, I have a special guest with me. Here in the rocking chair by the Christmas tree is Debbie Feiss. Debbie has come to share a Christmas story, especially for children, but aren't we all children at heart? Debbie, as you probably know, is our student this year from Atlantic School of Theology, so I'll turn things over to her now. I came across this Christmas story a few years ago. Um, it's entitled The Manger Mouse, and it's written by Jane Tyson Clement. And this story is about a small mouse many, 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 many years ago who was just a little older than a baby when his mother and his siblings disappeared. And he's left all alone. And he's very frightened. He's not sure how to feed himself. He's not sure where or how he is going to live. Because although his mother had been teaching them how to look after themselves in the world, he was not really old enough to be separated from her, so her lessons were incomplete. And this one particular night, this young little mouse 
is looking for food. He is very hungry. And as he's walking along the edges of the building, because his mother had warned them never to go into the center of a room, to always keep to the walls, somebody with a lantern comes and frightens him, and he runs into an open door. And there on a bench, somebody has left a bowl of goat's milk to sour to make yogurt or cheese. The little mouse smells the milk and he climbs up the bench and he puts his paws on the edge of the dish and puts his nose in and he starts to drink and he drinks and he drinks. But then there's a heavy footstep behind him and the little mouse is so startled and afraid that he jumps. Because I'm sure we've all had that experience where you're startled and you just jump. Only for this mouse, he jumped forward into the bowl of milk. So he pulls himself out of the bowl of milk and the steps are getting closer and he runs down the bench and through another open door and he finds himself in a stable. And he goes into the stable and the animals are there, the oxen and there's some goats and there's chickens, and he can dimly see, because his eyes are kind of glued shut by the sticky milk, he looks up and he can see doves, and he knows that doves are safe. And if he stays to the walls, the other animals won't bother him. So he crawls along the walls, and he's trying to clean the milk off of himself, and he's getting tireder, and, and he's finding the world just a terribly scary place. And he's so tired that he starts to fall asleep. And just as he's falling asleep, he hears more footsteps. But he's fairly safely hidden, so he stays where he is. And coming into the stable, he hears the steps of a donkey and he hears voices. He hears a man's voice that he recognizes. And the voice is saying to the other voices, well, he's very sorry, but this is the best that he can do. So the voice that he knows goes away and the two other two humans, the woman gets down from the donkey and the man makes her comfortable in the empty stall with the hay and he quietly says that he's going to go out and get them something to eat and he'll be right back. And what's so surprising to this little mouse is the light that's in this stable. He doesn't know where it's coming from, but it's not a light he's frightened of. It's a light that he says, feels like peace. So the little mouse settles down and goes to sleep. And a little while later, there's another noise and it wakes him up. And he opens his eyes as best he can and the stable is even brighter than it was before with this light and an owl flies in through the door and perches up in the rafters with the doves and there's peace and the little mouse realizes that the voice the sound that woke him up was that of a baby crying and all of the animals in the stable know that that baby, that baby is the one that's been promised, the one that's going to bring peace to the world, the Prince of Peace. And the mouse hears a sound beside him and he looks around and it's the stable cat. 
and normally the mouse would be terrified. But that night, there is no room for terror in that stable. All of the animals are friends and there is peace. And the mouse and the cat have a conversation. They both would like to go and see the baby. But the mouse says to the cat, oh, but I'm just, I'm so full of milk and I can't get myself clean and I know I don't smell very good, so I can't really go over and take a look at the baby. And the cat says to the mouse, may I clean you? It would be my privilege. So the mouse lays down in front of the cat and the cat licks the mouse clean, starts at the tip of his nose and works down to the very end of his tail and cleans all of the sticky milk from the mouse's fur. And the mouse gives himself a little shake and the two of them walk across the floor of the stable and the cat jumps up on the end of the manger and looks down at the baby and the mouse crawls up the leg and along the side and sits beside the cat. And they both stay there until morning light watching while the baby sleeps. And with the dawn, they both jump down off of the manger and the cat asks the mouse, well, where are you going to go now? Because through the night they've shared their stories. And the mouse says, well, he doesn't really know because he's just begun. He doesn't know where he's going to live. And the cat makes a suggestion. He looks at the mouse and he says, We've been so blessed tonight. I haven't had that instinct to run and chase after you. And I don't want to forget what that felt like. And the mouse looks at the cat and says, and I haven't been afraid of you all night. And I would like to remember what that feels like. So the cat suggests to the mouse that if the mouse should make his home under that manger, that the cat will remember this night and won't ever chase the mouse as long as he lives near that manger, that they will remember the miracle that happened that night. So the mouse thinks, says that that's a lovely idea. The cat goes off and the mouse pulls in some straw and some twigs and builds himself a little nest. And just before he's dropping off to sleep, the woman, the mother of the baby, reaches down with a few crumbs of bread and a few pieces of cheese and lays them at the mouse's front door. And the manger mouse curls up knowing that he is safe and that it has been a night like no other night. Thank you, Debbie. A wonderful story to remind us of the mystery and the magic of Christmas. As a song today, I want to send one out to children it's a story and a song told or sung by Tom Chapin. Tom is a brother to Harry Chapin, who was a great singer-songwriter of the 1970s and 80s. Tom Chapin continues to perform and tell stories today. This particular song I'd like you to look up is a song that I think is the fantasy of many kids and maybe big kids too. It tells what happens when a boy by the name of Bruno and his sister go Christmas shopping with their grandmother, Grandma Hall, which just happened to be my grandmother's name too. They go shopping with Grandma Hall on Christmas Eve 
and they get locked in the mall. What would you do if you had free run of a mall on Christmas Eve? So the song is by Tom Chapin. It's called Bruno's Christmas on the Mall, and you'll find that online. And now as we close in prayer, I want to wish you all a blessed Christmas and hope that you, in whatever unique way you celebrate this year, will stay happy and healthy and safe. Let us pray. Loving Father, help us to remember the birth of Jesus, that we may share in the song of the angels, the gladness of the shepherds, and the worship of the wise men. Close the door of hate and open the door of love all over the world. Let kindness come with every gift and good desire, with every greeting. Deliver us from evil by the blessing which Christ brings, and teach us to be merry with clear hearts. May the Christmas morning make us happy to be thy children, and Christmas evening bring us to our beds with grateful thoughts, forgiving and forgiven. For Jesus Christ's sake we pray. Amen. And that prayer was written by Robert Louis Stevenson. So until we can meet again, may you keep in touch, stay safe, and keep the faith.